Hi, my name is Dave, and you're watching the Short Vol Show Live. Let's take a look at the market, some news stories, and let's check out some option strategies coming up right now. Short Vol Show Live. Stay with me. Welcome to Lincoln News with your host, David Lincoln. Now, now here is David with the top three news stories of the day today. Welcome to Lincoln News with your host, David Lincoln. All right. Thanks, ladies, for that. And um, yeah, I mean, I like to check out investing.com. A lot of people use investing.com newsfeed as um, kind of a way to populate their Twitter feeds, <laughs> I notice. Um, they generally have like some good stories. I also check out um, Drudge Report, which is you know, any any sort of news media you get is going to be leaning politically some way. And Drudge Report is famously um, conservative. Um, and But if we go to investing.com for today, it says tech leads Wall Street lower as global growth worries surface. Um, I, th I think I've mentioned this before, but I like to look at uh, one video that I like to look at on YouTube a lot is um, Dan Kaufman and Theo Trade uh, daily videos. And... You know, um, Dan doesn't always get it right, but none of us always get it right. And um, but he's good at describing what sort of climate we're in. And um, just to give you um, what he was talking about yesterday, he was saying how the um, volatility has come in so much that the implied move on the SPX for the next two days was a very um, small one and basically um, was saying that it would pay to be long premium because um, volatility has gotten so cheap. You know, we did see the VIX dip below the 16 level yesterday and um, we've gotten a pop today. I believe it's up about 75 cents right now. And indeed, we did get, uh, um, I think he said the implied move for two days for the SPX was 20 or 22 points, and we've gotten a 21 point move just today. So, um, nice call again by Dan. Um, Dan gets criticized sometimes for always being bearish, and um, but he definitely did clean up on that down move we had uh, through December and January. So, uh, kudos to Dan and those guys on Theotrade. Check out, I did do an interview with him uh, last year, which was a lot of fun. He's connected with um, O'Connor. Um, the O'Connor brothers, his, uh, I guess his uncle worked with them at the beginning in uh, Chicago, comes from a trading family. And um, I worked for an outreach of the O'Connor brothers with um, when I worked for Eric and Sevy and, uh, and SMY and team on the SIBO. If you're part of that group, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, um, so we have seen a little bit of a sell off this morning. Um, I've been focusing on Tesla a lot. Tesla, it seems to always, you know, stay in this range. And um, if I pull up the chart here, you can see it just sort of has been oscillating in this range. And let me get rid of the bokeh behind me here so we can actually see the chart. All right, there we go. And let me get out of the way a little bit. All right, so you can see it just kind of has been oscillating in this range. And it's about from like about 250 up to about... 380. Now that is a big range, granted, but it seems to stay in that range. And so my thought is, all right, well, how do I capitalize on this? And I guess one way would be to um, sort of buy a calendar spread, um, sell a, a far out straddle, maybe, or maybe sell a far out strangle. Maybe you sell the uh, the 260. I don't know, 270, 370 strangle a ways out uh, to capitalize on that. But, you know, you have to have that conviction of mind that when it does get to one of these extremes here, like back, if it gets back down to like 260, that you're going to hang on and look for it to retrace back to the mean here, which it seems to keep doing over and over again. And I, I notice every time there's bad news and it gets down down lower here towards like the 270 area people give up on it and people say oh that's it for that's it for tesla and then it rips back up um some of these huge rips remember that day when uh elon musk said that um 
you know, that he had cash to take over the company with or something. And it made this huge rip. I, I, I think that that was this one here in uh, October. Huge rip to the upside. Um, you know, and then we see, uh, well, Tesla is behind on, you know, their their uh, production or something rip back down but it, it stayed in this in this range and there has to be a way to capitalize on this uh this continued range that we've stayed in so i've been looking and, and puzzling over tesla a lot um beyond that um still kind of fascinated with the mj's um tilray been hanging out really volatility has really come in it's become a lot less volatile stock it's just it's kind of just there's this uh decreasing little triangle here i i guess probably um a technical analyst could could uh describe it better but you can see that it's basically becoming less and less volatile as time goes by and it's it's kind of sort of pegged around the 80 level here um and if we look at volatility here, it has dipped below 100. Uh, it looks like Feb 97, 89, 96. You know, this was up there in the 200s at some point when it was really ripping around. And so that has come in a lot. Um, but it's still, there's still some meat on the bone here if you want to make plays. Um, let's just take a look at, for example, the March at the Money Straddle, 78 probably even has a 78 strike but let's say the 77 and a half strike I can just switch this for ease here to straddles all right so you know $18 for the for the straddle in March that sounds pretty rich $80 stock $18 for the straddle right um, could move there it's probably somewhat fairly priced um, but D it, there is, you know, there is some meat on that bone still in Tilray. Um, we've seen the big ones, Facebook, Apple, are, are now off the lows. Um, there is the, the Facebook. That was the day. It was up like 13. Um, or maybe it was 19. I can't remember. I know I looked during that day and it was up like, it was up 13. But I think it might have ended up 19 on that day. But the gap was was decent um apple off the lows here again now look it looked awful and then it, it bounces back so you know too bad for these people somebody who maybe bought it in the 190s here and puked out in the 140s um you know the market never ends and it's never it's never just going to zero and you got to kind of keep that in the back of your head when stuff is down especially as a company like apple apple is not it doesn't feel like it's going to be out. It might be down for a little bit, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be out. Same with Facebook. I, I believe Facebook has like no debt. So yeah, they can be, you know, somebody can start to sue them or people can trash Zuckerberg, but the, the company still is, um, you know, it's worth a, a, a heck of a lot of money. And that's just the way it is. Um, let's focus there for a second on um, a biotech stock that might be, one of my buddies is trading. Um, he was telling me, you got to buy it, got to buy it, got to buy it. And, of course, I didn't listen. <laughs> and now that, of course, to my, um, like, to my defense, that was back, I think, in either March or May when he told me to buy this stock. Okay, so I would have had to hold it for, like, eight months. Now, I don't have whole lot of capital and for me to like have the conviction to hold on to a small biotech based on a recommendation of one of my buddies for like eight months i wouldn't have been able to do it so i'm not kicking myself too much on this one because i just know myself and i wouldn't have been able to do it but he hung in there but but they just they analyzed the company they like the drug this is a drug for um depression and the trials have gone great. There, um, there aren't too many com competitors with them. I think they were talking about Wellbutin, something like that. But um, the trials have gone great, and it's 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 worked in the trials. And and you see this rip from 275 level up to uh, eight and change. And now, 
um, you know, this has always been illiquid options. If we do look at the options markets here, it's um, it's not a real pretty picture as far as the options markets. Let's take a look at, um, let me pull this off of straddles here, and let's take a look at like March. Um, well, March 10s aren't too bad. One bucket bid at 125, but March 12s, 40 bid at 80. Um, some of these other markets I was looking at yesterday, uh, 195 bid at 250 isn't too bad. But look at this, 250 bid at 390. What do you want to do? 250 bid at 390. Um, you know, that's like a market maker's market. Um, I'll, I'll make that market. I'll be 250 bid at 390. What do you want to do? I'm 10 up. I'll buy them for 250. I'll sell them at 390. You tell me what you want to do, and I will honor that market. Um, with such wide markets... Now, you can sort of test them and try to trade stuff in between the markets, but with such wide markets, you really have to have an opinion. You have to massage your way into it, and you have to massage your way out. Now, um, a lot of times with this sort of thing, uh, if you're, your ticket says if it's an opening or closing order, and a lot of times the market makers will, if it's an opening trade, they'll let you get in at around a fair value price. Um, now, what is fair value? Well, that's hard to determine. Um, you know, your sheets are going to give you some value in between. You could just take sort of the midpoint or you could look at the theoretical values on on uh, whatever the Black and Scholes model you're using is with the implied volatilities at the time. But once again, that is just an educated guess at what the value of these of these uh, products is. Um, but market's pretty wide. Let's just take a look at, if I go to analyze tab here, I can look at some more statistics. So here we have Trade volume today, it's traded a total of 568 options. So, you know, thin, thinly traded. If we look at time and sales, we can see what was traded. And it looks like a 50 lot was the biggest trade of the day of uh, June 10 calls. Someone bought 50 June 10 calls. Um which is appears to just be a bullish play. And we'll have to see where that goes from here. Um, it looks like it's backed off. This stock had a rip before the open yesterday um, to the high 11s. If I change the charts here, we can see it. If I was going to move this up here. So you can see it ripped to... Uh, 1197 before the open yesterday and it's kind of been a fade ever since um i don't know it looks like it, the stock is still a fade here but you know if um this is a waiting game with a lot of these uh drug stocks you might have to wait another six months before you get that next trial um information or you know it's a process and if you're going to trade biotechs you kind of have to get into it and figure out which, how many drugs they have in the pipeline, where they are on those drugs, and try to make some analysis of it. And that's pretty much too much for me. So I pretty much stick a, stay away from these biotech ones. But just to kind of show you one of them and, and sort of talk about it briefly, there is AXSM. All right. So let's take a look quickly at Dredge Report also. Um, and we have, I guess... AOC released a green New Deal plan maybe today. That's why it's saying be green here. Fixing global warming. And it looks like it's a relatively slow news day beyond that. So um, anyway, thanks for watching today. Um, VIX up a little bit as i said before now it's up uh, a point 40 so if you did miss the boat on you know shorting some of this volatility um and you want to jump on that train well uvxy is up three and change already today so um if you if you do believe that either the vix uh, is going to go lower or if you just think the vix is going to stay here and you want to take advantage of that contango train that we've talked about so much might be a, a time to short some you know, some, some UVXY. Now, I'm not here to make that call for you. I'm just here to describe it. I don't want, you know, don't come back to me if it rips higher and say, Dave told me to short UVXY. 
because I didn't. <laughs> but um, if you are thinking about jumping on a short vol strategy, a day where volatility is up like today is a better time to do it than a day when we are uh, crashing lower. Uh, currently, showing Contango uh, down to 1.3%. Now, Contango range has been anywhere between, I, I, I suppose, 1% and 4% in the last few weeks. Now, if we look at, if we kind of extrapolate out, okay, 1% Contango, what does that really mean? Well, that means that um, over a month's time, um, if you have if UVXY is fifty, over a month's time, its value, all things being equal, is going to decay by fifty cents. So UVXY now fifty one fifty. Fast forward a month from now, everything the same. UVXY would be fifty one. So not a huge not a huge effect on it. Um, however, you know once you get up to sort of a five percent level. Then, you know, 5%, well, a month from now, UVXY would be $2.50 lower. So it, it starts to compound once um, Contango builds. We haven't really been out of a fairly flat area this whole year so far. However, um, we are just um, sort of happy to be back in Contango after an extended, extended period of backwardation earlier in this year. Um, and so, it, you know, it kind of is taking a little time to adjust back to higher levels of Contango. Um, so, yeah, right now, um, VIX up a little bit, UVXY up a little bit. The curve has flattened out a little bit, which is kind of expected. V what's happening in the uh, term structure right now is very much um, looks very normal uh, as far as um, what is going on in the market. Um, you know, you have a little sell-off, you have a little flattening of the curve, but this is what we like to see is that, you know, we're staying contango, it just kind of flattens out a little bit, and um, then when we have a flat day or another down day, um, contango will build a little bit, but we keep the curve in contango, we're always decaying a little bit, that's what we want to see. We don't, what we don't want to see is like... Um, several days of a sell-off and we're in backwardation and this spot is way above all the futures and the curve structure gets destroyed. Um, we'd love to stay in this contango and because every day that we stay in this contango, even if it's just this 1%, you're, we're still decaying and this is still heading towards new lows. Um, so there you have it, back to normalcy in the markets, even with a little sell-off today. Um, key levels uh theo trades talked about key levels a little bit if we look at a year chart we're gonna see the sell-off and then kind of back to just this kind of like area here that we've been in for and we've we've flirted with for so long um where do we go from here i don't know i'm not a prognosticator of where we go from here uh, I can tell you that um, vol is in. Um, if I if someone held a gun to my head, I would probably be more of a buyer of volatility at this level than a seller. However, being a buyer of volatility is different than being a buyer of volatility ETFs. Uh, with the ETFs in Contango, I wouldn't be purchasing ETFs. I, I do think that um, the... 1% contango is can can be kind of offset in your head by the uh, discounted pricing of out of the money call spreads in UVXY. UVXY has a skew in it, right? We've talked about this before. It's to the upside. So if we look at this chart here, or I'm sorry, the, the, the option screen here, this column on the far left, and let me look at myself here for a second and make sure I'm not in the way. Yeah, this column right by my shoulder on the far left, that's showing implied volatility by strike. And you'll see as we go up through the strikes, implied volatility is higher and higher. That's because of the skew to the upside. Skews came in after the crash in um, way back when in the 80s. And uh, they put skew into the downside in uh, the indices. And... Uh, and uh, the reverse is true for, for UVXY because 
the danger, like the big extreme move in a VIX product is not going to be to the downside. The big extreme move is going to be a, a spike to the upside. If you know, the, it's the same with, or it's the opposite of the market. The, the, the big move is not going to be a huge move to the upside. The bigger, scarier move is going to be a huge move to the downside. Thus, um, there's a skew. And what that means is if you're buying a call spread, you're going to be buying, let's say, if I were to buy the, here the March 45 call and sell the March 60 call. Okay, so I would be buying a um, volatility somewhere around 80 and selling a volatility somewhere around in the 90s. And that due to that skew, um, that kind of offsets a little bit the effects of contango and it makes it a... Um, more of a fair playing field for me to buy volatility by buying an out of the money call vertical in UVXY. So if you were going to play volatility to the long side, I would recommend buying um, at the money to out of the money call verticals in UVXY or maybe in VXXB. Um, if you're looking to short volatility, I would be looking to um, either sell similar call spreads or um, you know, or buy buy similar put spreads. Obviously, call and put spreads are the same thing. We've talked about that before. Um, I might look if I was going to be, however, uh, shorting volatility to move out farther than March. I would look to go to probably June at this point. Um, give myself plenty plenty of time to weather any spikes. You know, I might I would I, I was looking the other day at maybe like a June forty five forty put vertical. Okay gives you gives you time you can almost double your money um on this one um i feel comfortable that uvxy will go through the 40 strike in the next 134 days um i like a spread like that um it, there is a skew that's working slightly against you but um you have contango and um sort of beta drift type things working for you and um, and give yourself ample time. That's that's the kind of spread I like. Um, you know, UVXY has gone down a lot lately, but you know, we we know that it just mathematically will take out this thirty-five low at some point in the future. We just don't know when it is. Um, and so that is the case to the downside and to the upside. If we look at the VIX here, kind of like in a mid-range, right? Kind of in a mid-range. If it's going to go back into the range of 2017, then it's on the high side. But um, I, I think we would have to take out the all-time highs and reach further than those for us to get anywhere near this. I think this the real outlier on this chart is that 2017. I think we're in a more, much more normal time overall um, right now than we were in 2017. Cool. All right. Well, that's enough yapping from me. Um, thanks for watching the show today. Uh, we will have some new people coming on soon. Um, if you want to be part of the show or contribute, please uh, reach out to me. Please check out Gorilla Trades. If you have um, purchased a Gorilla Trades uh, membership through me, just uh, let me know about it. I'm just curious to see how many people have done that. Um, Gorilla Trades offers... Um, different stock picks and they um they have a the way a way they go about it where they uh recommend something and then it has to trigger and then they will give you uh points of where to put um stops where to get in and get out and um they have a great record and they're, they're really good at picking stocks which i am not good at so um with me uh, helping you with some option strategy and with them helping you pick stocks. It's a team that can work for you great. Thanks for watching today, folks, and we will see you next time on the Short Vol Show Live.